Welcome back. So we're talking about how to use the singular value decomposition to solve a linear system of equations ax equal to b, even when a is not a square matrix. Namely, we do this using the Moore-Penrose pseudo-inverse here, a dagger. And we've been talking about underdetermined and overdetermined systems of equations, where in general, you either have infinitely many or no solutions of these equations. But I want to be a little bit more mathematically precise about exactly what are the conditions on the A matrix and the vector B so that you have no solutions, A unique solution, or infinitely many solutions. Now, this goes back to some linear algebra that we've probably all learned, but might not have sunk in the first time around, or at least it didn't for me. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through uh, the, these four fundamental subspaces defined by the matrix A. So I'm gonna, you're, you're probably going to remember the column space and the range and the kernel and the null space and all of these, these words that you've heard in linear algebra classes. And what I hope to do is to make it all come together and make sense in terms of when this matrix A, the system AX equal to B, actually does or does not have a solution. Okay, and it's going to relate to when, uh, when you can get exact solutions or when you can only get approximate solutions. Okay, so remember that the solution of AX equal to B, I'm just going to write it over here, the solution uh, of AX equals B only exists if, so if and only if, B is in the column space of A. B is in the column space of A. And we're going to denote this column space literally by column of a. And I'm going to say what this means again. So if I have AX equals B, then what we're trying to do is find some vector X so that if I added up the columns of A in that linear combination, it would equal B. Now clearly that's only possible if B is in the span of the column vectors of A. So there are, you know, in this case of the underdetermined system, it's highly likely that B will be in the span of the column space of A, but I could certainly cook up a terrible example, a counterexample of a very degenerate A matrix where it's not true that B is in the column space of A. So for example, I could cook up a bad A, which is equal to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and a corresponding B vector, which is equal to 1, 2. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that there is no x vector possible that can multiply this A matrix and give 1, 2. Because 1, 2 is simply not in the span of these column vectors, because I chose them to be degenerate. Because this only has one direction in the column space, the 1, 1 direction, and B is not in that column space. So this has no solution. Even though it's kind of this short fat A matrix, I chose a really, really bad short fat A matrix where this is not true. Now, even in this case of the overdetermined system where usually I don't expect my, a, my, my B vector to be uh, exactly solved by AX, if B was one of the columns of A so that it was in the column space of A, then there is a solution to that. So if I had A equals 1, 2, 3, and then let's say 2, 3, 4, and if B is equal to 2, 3, 4, then this is trivially solved with X equals 0, 1. If I take 0, 1 times that A matrix, I get B. Again, because B is in the column space of A. So these statements about underdetermined and overdetermined systems are generally true, but there are certainly some column vectors B where there is a solution even for overdetermined systems, and there might be some underdetermined systems where there are B that, that don't have solutions. Okay, so both can exist, and it really depends on this column space of A. So that's really, really important is the column space of A. Now, there are uh, three other subspaces that are important. There's what I'm going to call the orthogonal complement. So this column of A, sorry, let me go back. Column of A, this set of all vectors that can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A is also equal to the column space of U. 
by construction. I constructed the singular value decomposition. This is the economy SVD. Specifically so that this column space of U hat is equal to the column space of A. That's called the range. Okay, so that's what those words mean. Now the next subspace is called the orthogonal complement, and it's kind of everything else that's not in the span of A. And we're going to denote this by the kernel of A transpose. Uh, I'm not going to talk in detail. This actually all follows uh, section 1.4 uh, of our book, Data Driven Science and Engineering. So if you want more details, uh, just go there. The link will be in the comments. And this space is the orthogonal complement to this column space of A. So there are vectors B that are in the column space of A, and there are uh, directions perpendicular where if that vector B was in that orthogonal complement, there would be no solution. Okay? And this covers the whole column space, uh, the whole Rn, the vector space Rn given by the columns of A. Now for the row space, we similarly have row of A is the set of all vectors that can be spanned by the rows of A. And again, by construction, that's equal to the row space of V transpose, which is the column space of V. Okay. Uh, that's pretty useful. And then the last subspace I'm going to talk about is the kernel uh, of A, and this is known as the null space. This is the set of all vectors x. This is the set of all vectors x such that ax equals 0. Okay, it's a very, very important uh, set. It's all of the vectors x that map to zero by multiplication with a. Okay. So for example, in this example, the vector 1, negative 1 is in the null space of this matrix because that maps to zero. Good. Now we're ready to talk about when there are no solutions, one solution, and infinitely many solutions. So the only way I'm going to have a solution of ax equals to b, an exact solution, is if B is in the column space of A. Okay, so that guarantees that I will have a solution if B is in the column space of A. And if B is not in the column space of A, if it somehow has some component that's, that's outside of that column space, then I will, no matter how hard I try to find an X, there will not be an X that, that exactly satisfies AX equal to B, as in this case. Okay, now if I want infinitely many solutions, so if I also, if also, the dimension of the kernel of A is not zero. So if I have a non-trivial kernel, which means that there are some vectors that map to zero, then there are infinitely many solutions. Then infinitely many solutions. And the way you can see this is, for example, let, let's call this vector x null. This is a vector that gets killed when it multiplies by a. Then what I can do is I can take a solution, uh, a solution vector that we know exists, and I can just add a null vector, that null vector to it. And when I multiply by a, I get ax, which is b, plus a times x null, which is zero. And so this is also a solution. And so if there are any vectors in this null space, in this, uh, this null space of the kernel of A that map to zero, then there will be infinitely many solutions x to the system of equations. And that's usually what happens in this underdetermined case, is that this A would have a big null space, uh, and B would be in the column space of A, and there would be infinitely many solutions. Okay? Uh, and if B is not in the column space, there's no solutions, which is often what happens in this overdetermined case. But again, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. There's some cases in underdetermined where there's no solutions. There's some cases in overdetermined where there are solutions or even infinitely many solutions. And it all goes back to this kind of column space, null space, uh, range, orthogonal complement that we all learned in linear algebra. I know when I learned this, I was uh, spacing out, looking out the window, and it was only much later when I learned about the singular value decomposition that I realized how important this was to solve AX equals to B. Okay, so next we're going to talk about how to use these solutions for linear regression problems, which is how we build models from data. So it's the foundation, kind of the starting point for machine learning. Okay, thank you.